U.S. President Donald Trump calls it the deal of the century. But for most of the world, Trump's so-called Middle East plan is nothing more than a tacit U.S. blessing for a one-sided land grab by Israel. Global condemnation against the plan is already pouring in. From the EU to the Arab League and OIC, many are asking how viable a peace plan can be if the other side wasn't even consulted. Has President Trump deepened a crisis he promises to solve? Our correspondent Alijan Ayanlar tells us more. In 2017, the newly elected Donald Trump had been in office for less than a month when he welcomed Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. From the very beginning, the U.S. president was determined to tackle one of the most complicated battles of the past century. During that meeting, Trump said, I think we're going to make a deal. It might be a bigger and better deal than people in this room even understand. That's a possibility. So let's see what we do. Three years later, the two leaders gathered at the White House once again to reveal the long-awaited plan that the U.S. said would resolve generations of conflict. On Sunday, I delivered to Prime Minister Netanyahu my vision for peace, prosperity, and a brighter future for the Israelis and Palestinians. This vision for peace is fundamentally different from past proposals. Trump envisages a future Palestinian capital in the town of Abu Dis, outside Jerusalem and beyond Israel's security barrier. He proposes underground transportation links between the Palestinian territories in the occupied West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And south of Gaza in the Negev Desert, two areas demarcated as industrial, agricultural and residential zones. One element of the plan that may prove to be its only enduring aspect is the U.S. recognition of Israel's claims over the Jordan Valley and all Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank. Noticeably absent from that announcement at the White House, though, were Palestinian leaders. They've pronounced Trump's proposal dead on arrival. Much of the Arab world has taken a harsher tone, lashing out at the so-called deal of the century. But one of the key architects say it's a golden opportunity for Palestinians. I think they look quite foolish today. Uh, also, one of the great ironies is they keep saying they want to be a state. Uh, if you're a state, you don't call for days of rage when you don't get what you want. So uh, this is a real moment for them to show the world, are you ready to become a state or not? For some, Trump's Middle East plan is seen as a tacit approval for Israel to annex 30% of the occupied West Bank, already reduced to a fraction of its historical borders. So the question is, will the pro-Israeli proposal bring peace and stability to the Middle East, or will it plant the seeds for decades more conflict and suffering? Straight talk. And joining me now is Chloe Benoit, who is a news editor at Middle East Eye. And joining us from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank is Mustafa Barghouti, who is the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative. Thanks for joining me on Straight Talk, Chloe. Mustafa, let me start with you. From what you've seen of the deal, which you call is an Israeli plan in an American envelope, what would this future Palestinian state the Trump administration talks about um, would actually look like? As it does on the map, all you need is to look at the map <clears throat> and you can see that it's not a state, it's not a contiguous entity. It will look like a system of apartheid, uh, clusters of Pantustan ghettos, uh, and uh, <clears throat> small entities linked to each other through tunnels, bridges, and roads controlled by the Israeli army. Uh, each of these tunnels and roads could be closed down by the army anytime they want. But the most important thing is that it reduces the size of what should become the Palestinian state from 22% which the international agreements uh, agree about to less than 11%. But not a 
state, but clusters of apartheid. Okay. So this system is, as I would call it, a system of ghetto style. All right. Uh, Chloe, uh, what's your take on the plan and how well, in your, in your opinion, it is uh, well connected to the realities on the ground? I mean, how, what kind of an impact it would have on the Palestinian lives if it is to be executed one day? Um, well, I think Dr. Berhouti put it well. This is essentially um, an Israeli wish list. This is uh, mm -hmm. what would be the ideal solution for Israel. Um, now, the likelihood of the plan being implemented it's, um, it is very low, but also we need to keep in mind that, in effect, large parts of the plan are already in place. Mm -hmm. What the Trump plan seeks to do is essentially make official um, the occupation, which for over 50 years has been treated as a, a temporary mm -hmm. situation um, and effectively just enshrine this um, into law and uh, erase um, any any Palestinian demands for, for justice, for land, for self-determination. Yeah, and also uh, protests have broken out in uh, mm -hmm. occupied territories. I want to get back to Mustafa. Um, tell us about the mood in Palestine as well as tell us about the mood in Israel, Mustafa. The mood in Palestine is a mood of resistance and uh, rejection, complete rejection to this horrible plan. Uh, Palestinians understand that uh, the plan aims at eliminating their historical facts, eliminating their connection to their historical sites, eliminating their right to Jerusalem, to the Jordan Valley, even to the Aqsa Mosque, which uh, clearly the plan wants to divide uh, between Muslims and Jewish people and uh, prohibit access to the mosque. Mm -hmm. So in general, what you see is acts of resistance, which has been growing uh, during the last few days. There were so many massive demonstrations everywhere. Uh, there were even acts of military resistance uh, in the last two days. And uh, in, in Israel itself, you could see that uh, there is no much difference between Gantz and Netanyahu. They all belong to the same racist right wing camp. But, but Mustafa, you previously <laughs> said you previously said we're working to bring back unity and internal. Uh, divisions. How could be this possible? And you were talking about nonviolent resistance. Uh, what's next for Palestinians? Uh, the most crucial point here is to unify all Palestinians in one unified leadership. That's what we are working on. How are you going to do that? To, uh, well, I think the most important first step will be a meeting that includes all Palestinian leaders from all groups. Uh, with Mr. Abbas as well, mm -hmm. the president, and, uh, and uh, agree on a joint strategy. The joint strategy should deal with not only with political decisions, but also with the forms of, uh, of uh, resistance that we should use in bringing down this deal and in bringing down not only the occupation, but the system of apartheid all over Palestine. Um, so, uh, Chloe, tell us about the timing of this uh, so-called peace plan. We know that both Trump and Netanyahu are going through some troubles in their countries. I mean, is it about helping a friend in his time of need? Um, I mean, certainly there's a lot of things that indicate that. So on the day uh, when the deal was uh, un unveiled, um, Netanyahu was actually indicted on charges of corruption. Um, and at the time, Trump was uh, also going through the impeachment process. Um, and we also need to take into account there is an election happening in Israel um, in early March, so less than a month away. Yes. Um, so certainly that's been viewed, uh, the, mood ha the move has been viewed as an attempt to uh, kind of boost Netanyahu, boost Trump uh, and their respective countries um, and possibly yes. will... Um, possibly with a view of uh, influencing the election results. Uh, Netanyahu, just right after the announcement, mm -hmm. said he'll uh, go ahead and annex uh, mm -hmm. the territories. But uh, Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, mm -hmm. opposed to that plan. He said he should wait uh, until mm -hmm. the election results are announced. So tell us how Benny Gantz is different than Netanyahu. Um, well, I think uh, Benny Gantz is in a difficult position here in which he was uh, invited by Trump uh, before the plan was unveiled to kind of see what is ahead of time. And I think they put him in a position where, you know, he had to uh, somewhat agree with it. What mm -hmm. Gantz has said is that he uh, is for a solution such as this one as long as it's agreed upon 
with the international community, which we know won't happen. Mm -hmm. um, one interesting aspect of what's been happening vis-a-vis -vis the discussions of annexation is that actually Kushner's uh, demands that Netanyahu wait until he annex uh, parts of the West Bank yes. until after the election has actually been seen pretty poorly by uh, mm -hmm. settlers. Mm -hmm. So this plan that gives the far right in Israel every, pretty much everything they want yes. is actually now being criticized because um, the U.S. is asking them to wait a month until mm -hmm. they start moving forward. Okay, Mustafa, tell us at this point how important it is for the Palestinians to have East Jerusalem as their capital and with a U.S. embassy sitting uh, on it. It's very crucial, of course. No Palestinian leader could ever accept uh, giving up Jerusalem. I mean, uh, of course, uh, the international community speaks about the right of Palestinians to have a state of their own and a capital in East Jerusalem. Uh, so why would we give up Jerusalem, which has always been the part of the Palestinian territory, which has always been the capital of Palestinian people. But now the plan and gives you the town of Abu Dis, which is outside Jerusalem and uh, beyond Israel's security barrier. But that is not Jerusalem, precisely. Jerusalem is the old city. Jerusalem yeah. is the place where you have the Aqsa Mosque, where you have the church of uh, the Holy Sepulchral Church, the most important Palestinian uh, Islamic and Christian uh, sites. You cannot exchange the real historical Jerusalem with a site somewhere outside. Mm -hmm. That is nothing a joke. But in addition to that, let me say that I want to comment on the issue of Gantz. Uh, I don't think there is any serious difference between Gantz and Netanyahu. They both want to annex uh, and uh, consolidate the annexation of, East, of Jerusalem. They both want to annex the Jordan Valley. They both don't allow a Palestinian real state and substitute it with uh, clusters of apartheid. Uh, so there isn't really much difference, but uh, most many Israeli intellectuals, I would say 50% of the Israeli articles are saying that this plan is dangerous also. I think there is a growing understanding that apartheid is not a sustainable system, that apartheid eventually will isolate Israel as it did to the South Africa. Okay. At one point. Okay. Uh, Chloe, Turkey was swift on calling this plan. Uh, that on arrival and said Jerusalem is Turkey's red line. Uh, also, the European Union condemned this decision. But could the international community come up with a solution, at least this time? Um, well, definitely. While places like Turkey or the European Union have condemned the plan, um, in effect, what Palestinians need at this mm -hmm. point is far more than, you know, strongly worded letter. Um, so at this point, I think we've seen that the U.S. has lost all credibility in terms of being a, a peace broker. Um, so it's time for other um, states to step in and either push for a solution that respects international law, human rights, and the... Are you hopeful they're going to step in? Um, <laughs> not really. I would like to, but mm -hmm. I'm not quite, frankly, I'm not quite sure um, Palestine is high on the agenda for a lot of these countries. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is definitely something that they should look into. Obviously, the situation has gone on for quite some time, and uh, the Europe especially has seemingly abdicated kind of any role in terms of pushing forward right. uh, a solution at right. this time. Right. Mustafa, last question to you. Do you think the time has come for Palestinians to think of a new generation of leadership? Totally, yes. We need new leadership. We need new strategy. We need uh, to give up this whole illusion of uh, peace based on Oslo Agreement, which was nothing but a trap that Palestinians fell in. Uh, we need a whole new approach that relies on peoples, on resistance. And our main goal should not be negotiations now. It should be changing the balance of power between us and Israel. And we need to give a, pla a place for the younger generation, which represents the majority of the Palestinian people. Uh, but also, I think we need to adopt uh, a whole plan to bring down apartheid, not in the West Bank and Gaza only, but in the whole of Palestine. The Israelis must understand that we will never, ever accept to be slaves of a system of apartheid. All right. Mustafa, thank you for joining us from uh, Ramallah and Chloe. Thanks for being with me on the set. Appreciate it.